Hello everyone, Vincent Pleasant back again for another video from Pleasant Woodworks. Today we're going to do a project that I've been thinking about a lot and took a lot of thought to see exactly how I want to go about completing this project. So some of you may already know I am in law enforcement and a friend of mine uh, lost his canine partner a little bit ago. Um, in a previous video I went ahead and put a picture of them two together. So I wanted to make a charcuterie type board uh, as a tribute to uh, my friend and his, his fallen canine. I went ahead and did a lot of the prep work already. I took a slab similar to this piece of, you know, this piece of walnut here, went ahead and took the bark off and planed it down, flattened it a good bit and came up with this right here. Unfortunately, I couldn't keep the, that live edge uh, because it, the board was too wide for my mold. So I had to cut down the live edge on each side and uh, went ahead and split it down the middle. So with this project, we're gonna do something a little bit different than I have done before. I'm gonna pour a thin layer of epoxy and then once it's set, I'm gonna put some challenge coins, some I got your six police challenge coins inside of it and then some shell casings that I already prepped up lay those inside of it and clear coat it in. So once everything's set and plain down, I'll do a little customization with my laser over there and uh, get ready to finish it up with a different type of finish. Gonna do a fully coat this time. So for this project, I got a different epoxy than I used before. It's a super clear epoxy. I've used it in some other projects that I've been working on uh, off camera and it, it, I really like it. I really like it a lot. This epoxy comes from a suggestion that uh, one of my subscribers recommended to me. And I must say, I like it so far. So with the wood prepped up, we're gonna go inside and I'm gonna mix up some epoxy off camera and go ahead and start with our first pour. See you in a sec. Inside and I went ahead and mixed up some epoxy. It's uh, a black tinted pigment uh, with some sparkles I added to it. Um, but we're gonna pour a quarter inch layer first um, and let it sit. This is a thicker uh, tabletop epoxy. So I'm only gonna pour a quarter inch. Um, that's what's the allowed for this new epoxy that I'm using. So I'm gonna pour this first and let it sit. Uh, if I catch it fast enough, it may just get tacky, um, but it's okay if it cures all the way or most of the way. Um, and once it's done, then we'll set our coins inside and the bullet casings inside and then fill it up with clear epoxy on top. So let's go ahead and pour this in. All right, everyone, we're back. It's been a few days. Our epoxy is fully set, and you may notice that it looks a little bit different than when we last left it. Uh, the reason for that is because I made a mistake and mixed up the epoxy at the wrong ratio. My bad. I was trying to do a thin layer of a tabletop, so it set pretty fast, um, but I did a two to one ratio instead of the required one to one ratio. So I had to take everything out, start over, and uh, we're back now. This time I poured a half inch thick layer of our thick set epoxy because I was just wanted to make sure it, had, it looked pretty good. Now I need to scuff up the epoxy a little bit so that our clear layer will bond to it really nicely. So I got a piece of 120 grit sandpaper here and I'm just gonna scuff it up lightly, uh, our epoxy real quick. All right, so it's scuffed up. I'm gonna take it out to the garage real quick and uh, blow it out and wipe it off with a little 
uh, denatured alcohol just to get all the dust particles and stuff off. And then we'll be right back after that to set in our coins and our shell casing. All right, so I cleaned out all the dust off of the epoxy. So now I'm gonna take our challenge coins and put them in, onto the board with a little bit of our star bond. Cause I just wanna make sure that the coins don't float. So just gonna take these out of the case and put a little bit of star bond on one side of the coin. And then just gonna set it on there. Like I said, just not a lot, just trying to make sure it doesn't set up on us. So I'm just gonna spray a little bit of our accelerator spray about where I want it. And then set it in place. Just like that. And we're gonna take the other coin do the same thing with the other side showing on the other side of the board. Spray of spray. Coins are in there, they're stuck pretty good. And now we're gonna just lay our shell casings inside. Kind of sprinkle them in, no, no particular order. I did fill these up with hot glue. Just try to minimize the air bubbles that may come up. Once we got these in place, we'll kind of move them around a little bit and see if we like the placement. Oh. Spread them around. I'm pretty sure they're going to move some uh, once the clear epoxy is put in, but that's okay. Mix up some clear epoxy real quick, pour, and then we'll be back to pour it in. All right, so we mixed up our super clear epoxy to the proper two to one ratio, and now we're gonna pour it in. I'm just gonna use our stick here, kind of move some of these casings back to where around where they were or so that it looks nice. 
I let's see, move that over a little bit. Scoot that one back. All right, I think that looks pretty good. Let's pop some bubbles real quick. And this this epoxy from what I've noticed from using it, um, thanks to a subscriber, uh, this stuff uh, eliminates bubbles really, really well. And uh, I'm gonna pop the ones that we got right now, and then over the few days, it'll pop on its own. Here in the next few hours, they'll pop on their own, any that's left in there. Set it for a couple hours every once in a while a few more bubbles will pop up but usually after i torch it one time it really doesn't have any more bubbles so um but we're gonna just make sure that we don't have any bubbles and we'll be back in a few days Hey everybody, we're back in the shop. It's been a few weeks, sorry. Uh, between we did our last step with this project, I had to catch up on some orders and I took a vacation. Anyway, we're back in the shop, ready to get this project finished. I got the laser going over there, doing a couple test passes to make sure the engraving I have planned is gonna turn out correct. Having a little bit of issues trying to figure it out, but we'll see what we get done tonight. Uh, so right now we're going to go ahead and take this out of the mold. Uh, like I say, it's been a few weeks. It is thoroughly cured. And with these crafted elements, uh, silicone molds, we're just going to let some air into the sides like this. And then this should come right on out. Man, this is hefty. So it came out pretty good. Um, happy about it. So you can see what it looks like. So now we're gonna run this through the planer, get it all nice and flattened out, even the wood, even with the epoxy, and uh, we can go on to the next step of sanding after that. Well, we're gonna trim up the edges and then sand. Let's get started. Plane down pretty good, nice and even. Um, still got plenty of room for our shell casings, which is nice. So, gonna trim up the edges real quick and then we'll be ready for sanding. So we got the board planed down nicely, got our edges and sides trimmed up nicely. So next up, we're gonna do sanding. However, we're gonna do sanding tomorrow because it's getting a little bit late tonight. I got a late start. So we're gonna get this going tomorrow. We're going to sand, do our engraving, and then get ready for the flood coat. Be back in a second. So we're back at the bench, gonna route the edges of this board. 
uh, with our round over bit and then we'll get to sanding. Uh, we're only, we don't have to sand too much because we're doing the flood coat on top. So we're just gonna sand uh, a 60 grit and then a 120 grit and then we'll be ready for at that point to go to the laser and laser the design that I picked out and flood coat after that. So let's go ahead and get to routing the edges and then the sand. First up, we're going to actually do 80 grit instead of 60 grit. So I'm gonna finish sanding uh, the rest of this with this grit, and then I'll go ahead and do the 120 grit, and I'll be right back, ready for the laser. So I'm over here in the desk area of the shop, uh, where my laser is, the X-Tool D1. Uh, got my fingers crossed, I got the belts tensioned correctly, and uh, got the first part of the project loaded up in the computer. So I'm gonna start this other camera real quick, and then start the laser up. So we're back inside now. The lasering's done, sanding's done. This thing's ready to go for the flood coat. Uh, there's a couple little things that happen with the laser. Uh, I can't do anything about it now, but in the future, I'll make be sure to make sure these the adjustments are made and get them fixed. There's a little bit of indention there on the paw print and a, a little defect there on the W. But anyway, we're going to continue on with it. Next up is the flood coat. I'm going to use this tabletop epoxy by Super Clear. And just to give a little preview, this is one of the another project that I'm working on. Um, it gives that gloss look to it. I really like it. So we're going to do that same thing, clear up this clear part of the epoxy, make everything pop, and it'll look real nice. So we'll go ahead and mix up some tabletop real quick and get to pouring. All right, so we got our epoxy mixed up, ready to go. We'll get this excess off real quick of the stick. And now we're gonna pour. So I'm gonna pour the epoxy on, move it around with my hands. On the underside, I already have some tape, some painter's tape to make the cleanup easier once we're done um, and finish the bottom side. But we're gonna go ahead and pour this, smooth it out with our hands, and make this thing shine. So we got our initial pour done. Now I'm just gonna use our hands and move it out to the edges. Let it fall over the edges as it wants to for now. Just 
get it all the way out to the edges like that. And this epoxy is, like most epoxy these days, is self-leveling epoxy. So it's gonna be nice and level when it's done. And we just take our hands, get our edges, break up that surface tension so it just falls on its own and levels itself out on its own. Just like that. Make sure we get the, the corners real good. If we don't want any dry spots or anything like that. on there all the scratches that were in the epoxy is gone because it fills in the, all those scratches really lives up to its name liquid glass so we're gonna let this cure it'll be hard in about 24 hours but I think fully cure is like in two days or something like that maybe but we're gonna let this cure completely uh, when it's done I'm gonna take the tape off the underside and use some Osmo oil uh, it's like a liquid wax to uh, finish the bottom side of the, the board and will be all done. So we're going to do that process off camera and be right back once it's all done and have the final reveal. See you in a second. Thank you everybody for coming along with me as we did this project. I learned a little bit. Actually, I learned quite a bit. Um, we had a few mistakes, a little issues, but it's okay. Like I say, we're a growing channel. I'm a growing woodworker. We'll grow together. I really believe when he receives this tomorrow, he'll be happy with it. He'll be appreciative of it. Again, thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button, the subscribe button, and hit that little bell icon so you'll be notified each time we do another project. Next up is gonna be a cutting board of some sort. I'm not quite sure which one. Um, I got a few orders for Christmas gifts that I'm gonna get started on next, and I'll do a video on that. But until then, stay safe. See you next time.